Each week we have uh, this bread breakfast and something of an alternative from the usual oatmeal or cereal breakfast we have here. And I think it's uh, usually a good test of one's practice each week, seeing how one responds to it, whether you know, for some people there's just sort of no response at all. It might even be, oh, I remember my mom came to visit and I thought there was going to be oatmeal. She was quite disappointed. The one breakfast she was having here. For others, there could be excitement or, or even just aversion. Sometimes it's aversion to just the greed that's arising, or we can get averse to others. Usually I'm, I'm a bit surprised, I don't think about it too much until I see it and then I notice, yeah, there's some, some excitement, oh, there's something different, something enjoyable, I get to make what I want, have what I want sensual pleasure. So for each one of us, this is, this is just a, a lesson. How do we respond to such a thing? And more importantly, what's the interest we're taking in our own mind? Are we interested in how we react to a different experience? How we work with sense restraint? For myself, I often see it's a particular mood I'm in having this and that, and then all of a sudden the plate's quite full and greed has arisen unchecked. And then I see that, oh, it's not, it's not so helpful just to respond to that particular mood. Today it was sort of a middle way, wasn't so feeling so strongly. But I think it's always good to try something, to just work with these experiences as they arise. Often we can find that after we've had something, enjoyed some sort of sense pleasure, then, you know, living in a monastery and following the Buddhist teachings, we might feel guilty. Oh, I've done it again. I've had too much. I don't want to even eat the meal now. So we can develop aversion, sort of the, the self-torture the Buddha encouraged us not to engage in. So whatever it is, whatever we find ourselves experiencing, could even just be delusion, like, oh, I didn't even notice anything. It's just helpful to keep watching. If we falter, or we fall off, or we're not behaving in the way we, we really wanted to, didn't restrain ourselves enough, or possibly restrained ourselves too much. Sometimes when people don't have anything, then they feel critical of others. I'm doing this. Why don't other people follow the superior path I've taken? We want to keep on looking, we want to keep on examining and put the mirror in front of us, keep our eyes open and keep examining and exploring. This is the, the Buddha's teaching to us to understand our intentions and how to uproot the unwholesome ones and encourage ourselves in the wholesome.